K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Now's the time to get involved. The Coalition for a Strong America is the only conservative grassroots organization meeting with congressmen and high-level staffers on a regular basis. Stephanie Scruggs, co-chairman, is concerned about the upcoming TPA vote. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is a bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She recommends contacting your representative and telling them to vote no on this measure. It comes to the floor this Thursday, June the 11th. For more information, go to coalitionforastrongamerica.com and let your voice be heard. This has been a special announcement from K98 Talk. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, we'll come to the face. We'll come to the face of the new democracy. Don't expect just to admit a mistake. We'll pay enough election debts to those who will take. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, folks, happy Tuesday evening. We've made it through another work day. It's now getting to be the evening time. So time to sit back, relax, and try to take a break. Except we're not going to be able to do that because the world's going to hell. Can I just be honest with you for a second? The world's going to hell. In case you haven't been paying attention, uh, lots of things have happened over the last few days. We have um, the Republican mouthpiece, according to Fox, uh, Mr. Karl Rove, who basically came out and point blank said, you know, one of the only ways we could probably stop all of this violence is to get rid of the Second Amendment. Now, I'm not saying that's the right answer, but that would be one way to probably do it. Um, So first things first, because I've seen lots of people posting things that are like, well, that's not what he meant. He's just saying that would be the only way to do it for sure. When you have to qualify your answer as quickly as he did, it's what you meant. So can we just be real for a second? Karl Rove is not a conservative. Karl Rove is... I don't even know what you would consider or classify Karl Rove as. But we have have the clip, so here in a little bit, I'll I'll actually let you hear it, and then you can tell me I'm wrong. That's that's fine. Uh, If you think I'm wrong, you can always hit me up on Twitter, double underscore R underscore OKC. Uh, you can also hit me up anytime on email, uh, uh, rick at k98talk.com. Uh, I'm sorry, dot .org, rick at k98talk.org. Uh, you can also, of course, anytime you would like, uh, follow me on, or friend me on Facebook, uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Rowdy B. Robinson. Send me a friend's request. We'll talk. We'll chat. We'll hang out. It will be fun. Um, unless you're one of these people that have been kind of trying to talk to me lately. I don't understand what is going on in this country. I really don't, because there are so many things that are happening all over the place that are completely crazy, and the biggest thing that we're focusing on is what Kim Kardashian wore the other day, or who won the most recent set of music awards. I can't be that guy anymore. I, I'm not going to lie, there was a time I was that guy. I was on a couch, I was constantly either plugged in on a TV, or playing a computer game, or something like that, and it was just, it was a nice distraction, and it was 
mind numbing and it was fun because it got got me away from my stress but what I, what I didn't realize is and what it took me a long time to realize is I was slowly being put to sleep through apathy through not giving a damn what happened in this country not feeling like my vote mattered not feeling like anything could be changed the problem is <sighs> The problem, the problem is, for those of you who feel that way, if you give in to those feelings, then nothing is ever going to change. We are the only ones that can change things in this country. We have given all of our power away. And now we have a group that we have given our power to who is about to give that away. And those are the folks in Congress. Yeah, I've got a lot to say about them today, too. Uh, we also have the fact that the Pope has recently come out for climate change and basically also calling anyone who is a gun owner, gun seller, gun buyer, gun manufacturer cannot be, cannot possibly be a Christian. Um, so yeah, lots that we're going to be talking about today just to give you a little bit of a brief overview. Uh, now for tomorrow's episode and Thursdays, I actually have a couple of guests coming on. Uh, tomorrow will be Mr. Bill Morgan. Uh, some of you may know him from Twitter as uh, Colonel Obvious. Uh, he'll be joining me for the show. Um, we will be spending the majority of the show talking about a project that he has undertaken on his own, which is the Twitter, I'm sorry, Twitter anti-bullying project. Try to say that three times fast because all of a sudden it came, came out as Twitter, Twitter anti-bullying, uh, stuff. All right. Tw wow. I'm having a really bad night, folks. Can I just be up front? Okay. So Twitter anti-bullying campaign. That's what I've been trying to say, and for some reason it, has, it hasn't been coming out right. It's just been one of those days. It was a long day at work, and I get this way when I'm flustered. And I have to admit, I'm really, really flustered because I didn't expect the cloture vote to go the way it did today. I thought it would at least be in place for a while, give us a little more breathing room, maybe some time to sway some votes. But now we're down to... At last count, last time I looked at anything, it was roughly 30 hours at about two-ish uh, central so we're running out of time but that is actually what I want to start with first because I just I just feel like that people really aren't paying that much attention to it uh, at least to the point to to understand what it is that they're trying to do so uh, I want I, I, I want to play this clip right here it's not very long this is a Senate or yeah Senator Jeff Sessions from Alabama uh, one of his uh, quick thoughts about TPA that he's actually given on the floor uh, the, the floor of the Senate recently. So here we go. It says it's designed to promote the international movement of people, services, and products. Basically the same language used to start the European Union. All right. So why did you, why did I play that? You might ask. Well, if you remember yesterday, uh, while I was, or last evening, while I was talking to Jared and Lou from um, Red Nation Rising Radio, one of the things that I kept bringing up over and over again is this is the framework to do away with our sovereignty. Now, I want you to listen to what he says at the end one more time. We're just going to play the whole thing here real quick. It says it's designed to promote the international movement of people, services, and products. Basically, the same language used to start the European Union. Now, why do you suppose they would be using some of the same language that actually started an inter international coalition in Europe here in this in this bill? And why is it all of a sudden Ted Cruz, who was for the longest time completely ready to sign everything over on this, is now all of a sudden said, oh, no, this is bad. There's way too many backroom deals going on. This is going to be bad for America. Well, uh, Mr. Cruz, welcome back to the party, pal, because a lot of us have been screaming at this whole time. This is bad juju. It is bad for business. It's going to be bad for people. It's going to be bad for the economy. And what's even worse is it's going to be bad for our sovereignty. If you don't believe me, what did he say there at the very end? This was the exact same language used when they first started working on the European Union. We will no longer be a free nation when this stuff passes. It may take a while, and I'm not going to I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but this is the framework. It's no different than Glenn Beck and a few others like me who have been screaming this from the very beginning 
and granted, I had a much smaller platform when I first started screaming it, but I was looking at Obamacare and what it is and what it's designed to do, and it is the framework to get us to a single-payer system. And if you're below the age of 25 right now, you're cheering and saying, yeah, Rick, that's exactly what we need to do. And I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Here's the point. If you want socialized medicine and government taking care of you from the point you die, or from the point you're born to the point you die, then do us all a favor. Go move to one of those countries. Quit trying to bring that crap here. Some of us like being free. The problem is we're not free anymore. We don't realize how not free we are. But we really aren't free anymore. And that is another thing that has scared me as my children have gotten older because I look at the way things were when I was a kid compared to how they they are now. And I now I'm starting to look at the differences between what it was when I was hitting 19, 20, 21 and the way they are now. And this is a very scary time in America. This is a terrifying time in America because we are turning our backs on everything that our founding fathers believed in everything that every person that has ever worn a uniform that has fought bled and died for we are basically just saying eh screw it we're done we're ju we're just going to become you know we're we're just going to we're just going to go back to sleep rick we're done you know we're tired we've got bills to pay and things to keep up with and there's too much going on, and we, we can't do anything about all of this. Well, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. And I know you're wrong because of people that I've met along the way. People like Stephanie Scruggs, people like Stacey Lennox, people that will not give up until they do everything that they know they can do. And by God, I'm not saying that we're going to win this fight, but I am telling you that I will not be one of the ones sitting on the sidelines while this country goes down in flames. It is not going to happen. I cannot be that guy. I will not be that guy. If I'm one of the last ones standing up waving the American flags, singing the Star Spangled Banner, then that's exactly what's going to happen because this country was once the greatest place in the world and it can be again if we find our roots, if we find our beginnings, if we go back to the founding documents. I don't want to hear any more crap about this living, breathing organism they like to call the Constitution. I want to talk about what the Constitution is. The Constitution is a framework for freedom. The Constitution is the greatest idea by a group of really, really smart people, I dare to say geniuses, that everybody on the liberal side looks at like they're a bunch of freaking morons. They didn't expect this country to survive as long as it has. And I'll be damned if it's going to go down on my watch if I can help it. This is why things like TPA are important. And to stand up against them. To make your voice heard. Because even if it doesn't work, even if it doesn't matter, do you want to be one of those guys still on the couch or one of those gals still on the couch that says, eh, never mind, it's not going to matter? Because I can't be that guy anymore. I don't know how anybody could in this day and age, this time, just stand on the sidelines and go, yeah, nothing really left to fight for, yeah, pass the potato chips. I mean, wh what are we doing? What kind of an example are we setting for our children when we just roll over? What kind of example are we setting for our children when the biggest thing that we're concerned about is what big of a, how big of a TV we can bring into our home? When the economy is in shambles, when there are people that are going hungry. Yes, I am against most of the government programs, but I'm not against America's people taking care of those that have fallen on hard times. That's what we are called to do let's stop like, waiting for the government to do it and let's do something when are you going to do something when are you going to stand up when are you going to get off the couch when are you going to put down the remote when are you going to find a way to get involved when are you going to find a way to get involved it is that important it does matter don't let anybody tell you otherwise because as long as you have breath you have the ability to stand as long as you have the ability to stand you have the ability to be heard to be seen and by standing i don't mean necessarily literally i'm talking about the fact that you have the ability to stand on your principles we still have first amendment rights for the moment but i am telling you right now if 
TPA passes, and it's really, really close, folks, because it's already been passed by the Senate once. They couldn't get it passed through the House the first time, so they did a bunch of procedural changes and then sent it back to the Senate. If it passes, it goes straight to Obama's desk. And I ask you this again, as I've asked you so many times. Even if you are comfortable with this current president having this type of power, which if you are, I don't know why you're listening to this show, but if you are, then then think about it this way. What happens if Donald Trump gets the power next time? What is he going to do with it? Because these are dockable agreements. This means, for those of you that are not paying attention, that if this is passed and it becomes a law, because it will, if it passes, this agreement will basically put us in a coalition of other countries. There is no way for us to retain our sovereignty at that point, because no matter what happens, anything that comes up to do with this trade agreement has to go to a vote, which means we could wind up trading with what is now being called ISIL. You know, you should really look up those words sometime, and I'm not going to tell you what, what it actually means on the air, at least not today. I might tell you tomorrow, but I want to give you a little bit of time to look it over. Because it means a lot more than people are, are, are you know, the whole ISIS, ISIL. You know, ISIL is pretty important. You should really look up what that acronym means. It might give you a better idea of what the heck is actually going on. And this is another reason why I am terrified about things like TPA, TPP, uh, and all this other, what is it, the T-E-S-I-S or whatever the heck the other thing is that suddenly the acronym has escaped me. Um, I mean, dude, you know, it's, it's pretty simple anymore. Anytime anybody starts talking about TPA, TPP, T-S-I-S, all I start thinking about is, uh, as Stacy puts it, T-P-W-T-F, because it's all a mess. It is crazy that we are about to do this to ourselves. You know, everyone has always said that America will never be taken down from the outside. If and when she falls, it will happen on the inside. I'm telling you right now, this will do it. This will do it. All right, folks, going to have to take a really quick break, uh, and we'll be right back here in just a couple seconds. It's Cliff Davis from KLCI FM, the best radio station in the world. Coming soon. Stay tuned. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Hey everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. I am 
radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. Can I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's according to me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. For our own cause, we got a pen and telephone to buy this all your laws. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. It's America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and we are still on Tuesday. Anybody else feel like this is a really long week already? Maybe it's all the TPA stuff, because I have to admit, I haven't been as involved as some of the folks on K98 staff have been, mainly Miss Stacy Lennox, who has been working really, really hard with the Coalition for Strong America to help with their social media campaign to let people know exactly how crazy this is. So again, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to her and a, a quick hats off to both her and the Coalition for Strong America for doing what they're doing, for fighting the good fight, for putting in the time when those of us who don't have the kind of timers, still putting in what we can, um, and still trying to make a difference. These are the folks that have been in the trenches almost every single day with the shoulder uh, down trying to push through and trying to make people understand exactly how bad this is. And I cannot say this enough. TPA, TPP, or whatever the heck else they want to call it, is completely bad for this country. I don't care who tells you otherwise. Do the research on your own, and you tell me you're not terrified by what you find, because you're not going to find much. That should be the first indication that something is terribly, terribly wrong, because you're not going to find very much information at all about TPA, TPP, or anything else. You're going to find a few senators that are all about all about it. You're going to find a few la- labor unions that are completely against it. You're going to find some senators that are telling you it's a terrible idea, some congressmen. But most everybody, bipartisan, it, the thing about it is this is one of the first times I've seen bipartisan support and bipartisan disagreement. Because there are plenty of people on both sides who think this is a great idea and also think it's a terrible idea. And I have to tell you, even though I've said it before and I'll say it again, I never in my life thought I would align with Nancy Pelosi or Bernie Sanders. This is a terrible, terrible idea. Terrible idea. Okay, so I think since I've done that for now nearly a half hour of the show i think i have hopefully talked about tpa enough let's move on to another topic that um has me a little ticked off and we kind of touched on it at the very beginning and it's about mr carl rove and i hear lots of folks freaking out over what he said other folks trying to defend him for what he said i'm just gonna tell you at this point just just listen for yourself and you decide you agree with the president on gun control or not, you certainly have to agree with them that we see these these cases of mass violence way too often, and we see them more often in the United States than in other advanced countries. And I mean, you know, you, you, you're kind of in the position of saying, what do we do about it, whether it's government, whether it's community, whether it's family, how do we stop the violence? Well, I, I wish I had an easy answer for that, but I don't think there's any easy answer. Uh, we saw an act of evil, racist, bigoted evil. And uh, to me, the amazing thing about this is that it was met with grief and love. And uh, think about how far we've come. Uh, 1963, uh, the, the, the whole weight of the government throughout the South was to impede finding and holding and bringing to justice uh, the men who perpetrated the, the bombing. And here we saw an entire state, an entire community, an entire nation come together, uh, grieving as one, and united in the belief that this was an evil act. So we've come a long way. Now, maybe, maybe there's some magic uh, law that will keep us from uh, having more of these. I mean, basically, the only way to guarantee that we would dramatically reduce uh, acts of violence involving guns is to basically remove guns from society. And until somebody uh, gets enough oomph to repeal the Second Amendment, that's not going to happen. I don't think it's an answer. I think there were so many warning signs here. Uh, a friend who knew of, of what was in uh, Dylan Roof's heart, uh, parents who didn't pay attention, a community that uh, had given up on him, and uh, a loner who had fallen into uh, 
uh, the, the clutches of, a, of racist organizations that had come to believe in their ideology and, and put things up on the Internet that we didn't give any credence to whatsoever. And so there are a lot of warning signs here, and, they, and, and, and I wish that some of those people had spoken up and, and said, here's somebody who, who is in trouble and, and uh, a danger to himself and others. All right, so you heard him right there. What exactly did he say? He said, until we can make guns not be a part of society, there's no way to stop the violence. So until someone gets big and bad enough, basically, to get the Second Amendment repealed, he doesn't ever see a way of making that happen. But then he quickly says, but but I don't think that's an answer. Then why even bring it up? I tell you something that I learned in business a, a long time ago, and I've run businesses before. When someone quickly backpedals on what they tell you, or they modify what they tell you within half a second of it coming out of their mouth, it's because they realize they told you something that they weren't planning on saying. So they're trying to draw your attention away from the fact that for three seconds he was completely honest. The only way to get rid of this violence is to make guns not a part of society. The only way to do that would be to get rid of the Second Amendment. And nobody has the balls to get it done. That's what he basically said. It's exactly what he just said. Nobody has the balls to get it done. And then when he realized what had come out of his mouth, when he realized that for just a second, his political filter was not engaged, he went, oh, wait, 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 sorry. That's not, that's not the answer, though. If you don't think I'm right, look it up. There are tons of articles and things that you can read from psychologists that tell you that nine times out of ten, if somebody quickly modifies what they're telling you, then it means that for a split second, their shields were down and they let something slip, and now they're trying to take it back, and the only way they know how to do that is go, but, but, but wait, look over here instead. Why are we still listening to idiots like Carl Rove? How many times has this guy actually been right? I mean, come on, dude. Every election cycle, he's got his big white board and his markers, and he's making all this stuff, and it looks like freaking football plays and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. If this goes this way, we've got a Republican president. If this goes that way, we've got a Democratic president, and there's never been a Democratic president or never been a president who's been elected before that's been a senator, and because this particular team won the football game right before the election, then most likely it's going to be a Republican Dude, why don't you just take out your damn crystal ball? Because that's basically what you're doing. You're spoon, fe you're spoon feeding people crap that they want to hear. That's what you do. Because that's how you make your money. I don't care if I never make a dime doing this. I will not be someone who spoon feeds you things. What I will do is tell you what I think and then urge you to do your own research. If you choose not to do that, that is completely up to you and I am not your brother, not your uncle, not your father. I am not accountable to you and you are not accountable to me. So if you choose to take what I give you and you run with it, then that is entirely up to you. But I will not be one of these guys that sits on national TV or on syndicated radio at an FM AM station or whatever it is and spoon feeds you crap hoping that you're going to buy my products and buy my books and whatever else that I may start peddling at some point. I'm not ever going to be that guy. But that is exactly what Carl Rove is. He has become a money-making machine because of the fact that that he was able to predict an election that nobody expected to go the way that it did. All of a sudden, he's the great big kahuna when it comes to elections. Doesn't matter that at this point he's been wrong a hell of a lot more many times than he's been right, because he's still the great big kahuna when it comes to elections. And it infuriates me. Because there were so many of us that had our hopes up in 2012. So many of us that thought with everything as bad as it is right now, there's no way, no way that the American people are going to give this guy another term. And we were basically slapped right square in the face. I'm going to go one further for you. I honestly, that, that night when I started watching those results come in, I don't feel like somebody slapped me in the face. I don't feel like somebody punched me in the gut. I feel like somebody kicked me square in the balls. Because every ounce of breath I had was lost because I... I am a firm believer that if we had managed to make any changes in 2012, we wouldn't be looking at the T 
TPA situation that we are right now. I might be looking at everything through rose-colored glasses, but I am a firm believer that if there was a Republican actually in the White House right now, we would not be looking at this mess as long as it was an actual conservative Republican. I don't know where Romney fell on the spectrum. I don't really care because in 2012, I felt like I had to do my duty and fall in line behind the candidate. I'm telling you this right now today. Unless I agree with the candidate that is chosen, I will not be pulling the lever because, folks, we're done anyway. Can we just be completely honest? If we do not find a way to turn this thing around and do it in a way that is going to get conservatism back in power, not just a Democrat, not just a Republican, but somebody who is an honest-to-God conservative, we are done. It's over. It's finished. Because we're done. If TPA passes, we are done. May not be today, may not be tomorrow, but we will be done. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Yeah, everybody keeps getting on to me for talking about how it's going to put us under a world court because there's no way America would go willingly under a world court. Isn't that the same crap they told us when they have to? What's, what's happening with our commercials now when we get products that may or may not be from other countries? 100% North American beef. Pretty much any hamber hamburger commercial has that in there somewhere now. When it used to actually tell you where the beef came from because by our federal regulations, they had to tell you where the beef came from. But a world court said we couldn't do that. So now we don't do that because the world court said we can't do that. So please do not do me the disservice of telling me that we will never be under the jurisdiction of a world court because in some respects we already are and now we're just trying to make it even worse. I mean, I don't know what to do anymore, folks, other than to keep doing what I'm doing which is sitting here every weeknight telling you that the path that we are on is going to lead the to the destruction of this nation. There is a reason this show is called America Off the Rails. It's not because the graphic looked freaking awesome when it was presented to me because I came up with the name of the show first. And it's not because I thought it had a really good hook and I thought it would draw people in. It's because that's exactly how I feel right now is I feel like this country is going off the rails. And I will not stand by and watch it go any further without trying to do something. Even if I fail, even if it makes one ounce of difference none, I am still going to do this because I have to. And I know that the people that listen to this show agree with me. We have to do something before it's too late. We are probably roughly 24 hours from the pot, the potentiality of it being too late. Call me an alarmist. Call me a tinfoil hat wearer. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what? I've been called all that stuff before. I don't care. I am telling you that in between this idiot Carl Rove, who's now all of a sudden let it slip that as far as he, he's concerned, guns should be removed from the country, but that's not a good idea. Got to get rid of the Second Amendment, but that's not a good idea. And then we have the Pope. Should we talk about the Pope? Maybe we'll talk about the Pope when we get back from break, because it is about time for us to take another one. All right, folks, we will be right back here in just a couple of minutes. We're going to have to take another really quick break, and then we will continue the rest of the show. This is Rick Robinson. You're listening to America Off the Rails. We'll be right back. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access. 
at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. Now's the time to get involved. The Coalition for a Strong America is the only conservative grassroots organization meeting with congressmen and high-level staffers on a regular basis. Stephanie Scruggs, co-chairman, is concerned about the upcoming TPA vote. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is a bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She recommends contacting your representative and telling them to vote no on this measure. It comes to the floor this Thursday, June the 11th. For more information, go to coalitionforastrongamerica.com. And let your voice be heard. This has been a special announcement from K98 Talk. Calls, we got a pen and telephone to buy face all your laws. Political courageous, will you please the bill of rights? Support religious freedom, bless you pray to Jesus Christ. The press is in our pockets, cause there's no other free. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. And I know I keep playing that CPA commercial that has some older information on it, but it's still imperative that the word gets out there. Um, and unfortunately, since the vote's tomorrow, we really hadn't had much of a chance to update anything. But the simple fact of the matter is, yes, it's now the Senate. And yes, that vote already happened. And we got punched in the face. So now this is our last chance. For those of us who know what's at stake, this is our last chance. So pick up the phone. Find your congressman's or your senator's uh, Twitter account. Find their exchange number in D.C. and blow their phones up. Make them understand that this is not something that the American people want. No matter how much these idiots think they're going to get to line their pockets, is it worth them lining their own pockets at the expense of our sovereignty? Because that is what they are about to do. They are seriously about to sell us all down the river to line their own pockets. And to be part of this new world government. I guarantee you. I guarantee you this will lead to a one world government. Not today. Not tomorrow. Maybe not five years from now. Maybe not even ten years from now. But this will be one of the first steps to a one world government. Europe already took their first steps when they created the European Union. Now America feels like we're being left behind. Because we've always been the leaders in the world. So why not take the lead when we're flushing everybody down the toilet too? You know, it was funny when he said it last night, but then I got off the air, and the more I listened to it, the more I realized that it is an accurate assessment, and it is very, very sad that Jared, one of the hosts of Red Nation Rising Radio, actually said last night that America has gone from being a melting pot to a chamber pot. Now, depending on how you're looking at it, that can actually take on several different levels because you could be talking about the fact that we basically take all the garbage from other countries that nobody wants and then they basically don't assimilate anymore and they don't try to become part of the culture. They just come in, make as much money as they can or break as many laws as they can and then they run back away again. So, you know, that, that, that's one way to look at that. But let's look at it another way. Let's look at it another way. How do you think Congress views the common American person? Don't don't answer right away. Think about it for a second. How do you honestly think your representatives, your representatives, not the ones in New York that you can't stand, not the ones in California that you can't stand, your representatives, if you had the ability 
to be in a room and they did not know you were there and someone asked them about your their constituents what do you think they would say because history has shown us in a lot of ways what they will say one of them was um lyndon johnson who behind closed doors in the white house during the fight to get the civil rights amendments passed when people that were his friends who had seen the way that he talked about people of color and the way he treated people of color confronted him about why he was suddenly on board with getting these things passed he specifically said and i quote if we can pass this bill into a law we will have these and you know what word he used i'll have the president say it here in a second because you know he's, he's pretty good about that but we'll have them voting out of our hands for the next hundred years rod eccles and i have talked about this on this show as well as on his show the liberty cafe which airs every friday at nine central here on k98 or 10 eastern you know he and i have done a few shows together we we've, we've we've talked a few times and even he admits as a person of color that he doesn't understand why most of the people of color always side with the democrats this big thing that's going on with the confederate flag right now do you guys not realize that all they're doing is deflecting yes the flag is a symbol yes it has ter it brings terrible things to the minds of those that were oppressed but who was it that was flying that flag was it the republicans I dare say not. Was it the Democrats? I'll take absolute certainty for 200, Alex, because most of the of the states that fly those flags, that have flown those flags even before they became historically significant to some, and yes, that's air quotes, before they became historically significant to some, the states that flew those flags were predominantly democrat now why does that matter you might ask because i tell you again we are watching the blame be shifted and everything get focused on in a different direction and that direction frightens me because again we're not paying attention to what's important we are reacting out of emo uh, from emotion and it is a very scary thing to have happen but you know we do have our commander-in-chief our president of the united states who had this to say in regards to some, this uh recent shooting incident as well as a few other things that i'm sure he threw in as well racism we are not cured of clearly uh, and 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 it's not just a matter of uh it not being polite to say nigger in public, that's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. It's not just a matter of overt discrimination. We have to, societies don't overnight completely erase everything that happened two to three hundred years prior. All right, so that is now two presidents confirmed to have used the N-word, one behind closed doors and the other on a live broadcast for a podcast. There are lots of folks that have interesting things to say about Mr. Obama and his word choices, and actually one of them was quoted as to now call him the rapper-in-chief because there was no reason for him to use that type of language. I happen to agree I do occasionally let my language get salty here, but there are times for it and there are times not to use it. And this would have been the time where, as I did, because I haven't done that in the past, where I actually filtered out the N-word that was used by Lyndon Baines Johnson in that quote. Because there are times when it's relevant, there are times when it's not, and the simple fact of the matter is, no matter what this idiot, this crazy person tried to do, <laughs> if anything... He's failed because there are now plenty of people all across the country standing united and saying this type of stuff can't happen anymore. But why are we attacking the symbol? 
That's what this is. It's a symbol. To some folks, when they look at the Confederate flag, they see what a lot of us start didn't start being taught until I was in high school history. And I think that's honestly part of the time when they started doing a lot of revisions. When it wasn't so much about, sla about slavery as much as we were led to believe in earlier history vi visions or reversions. Because, or revisions or versions, sorry. Or because the simple fact of the matter is, slavery was already on the way out. It wasn't in vogue anymore. By this point, we even had black people that were owning slaves. Not to mention the fact that, you know, the, the white folks are all but demonized when it comes to, to slavery. But, you know, slavery was around for thousands of years. The slaves that came to America were actually conquered by other tribes and then sold off. They weren't conquered by white people. As a matter of fact, if you talk to some, because I have, if you talk to somebody from Africa and you talk to them about the fact that there are people here that use the term African American, their first response is, why would they call themselves that? They've never been to Africa. Not my response, theirs. So I ask you, why was it important for President Obama to drop the N-word during that podcast? Because it gave him status points. I have a wide range of folks that follow me and uh, interact with me on my personal uh, Facebook page, which is not the one I give out on the air, by the way. Um, you know, I gotta have a few minutes here and there, folks. I mean, come on. But anyway, so I have lots of folks that interact with me and I see posts from them all the time. And believe it or not, a lot of my friends on Facebook are liberal. You know what? I'm a fairly even-minded kind of guy. I don't think the right always has all the answers. I think the left has them even fewer. But when the left is right, they're right. And when the right is right, of course, they're always right. But um bum Okay, terrible joke, I know. But anyway. So, all of a sudden, all these posts started talking, or popping up about how Obama was going to be the hippest, coolest, post-presidential president ever. Um because of his language uses and word choices and the fact that he likes to go party all the time with folks like Jay-Z and Beyonce. Gotta tell you, and again, most of the folks that are posting those things and commenting on those things, typically in their mid-twenties. Some may be a little older, but I gotta tell you, at this point, if that's what we have to look forward to, I'm ready to check out. I'm ready to go all friends at Fred Sanford and be like, yeah, Elizabeth, I'm coming, baby. I mean, I'm done. If the future that we have to look forward to is a nation that is no longer a nation, which we knew was going to happen when they stopped enforcing the border, so let's just be completely honest. A nation that is no longer a nation, a people that are not proud of where they come from because white heritage is, is a disgrace now. I mean, it's one thing to not like the things that some of your ancestors may have done. It's another thing to hold yourself completely responsible for things that happened 300 years ago. And 200 years ago, and even 100 years ago. Because we weren't alive then. We were not the ones that made those choices. I can think of ten, tens of millions of things I would do differently if I was alive in the time where these historical choices and decisions were made. One of the first things I would do, again, because I've said it before, is go find the guy that after World War I decided that we needed to become the world police and punch him right square in the nuts. But I can't do that. Probably because he's dead. The other reason is because I'd probably go to jail. But if I was able to do it, I definitely would do it because we never should have become the world police. We never should have become a lot of things that this country is, which is an over overkill government that basically goes into every aspect of our lives and starts trying to tell us what it is that we need to do and how it is that we need to do it. You know, again, if those type of things were happening at the state level, I couldn't say anything because at least then you can vote with your feet. But when the federal government starts trying to regulate everything for you and tell you what you can eat, 
school lunches anybody before anybody points in and they're not doing that really really pay attention to the school lunches we made a lot of changes to those my kids come home every single day complaining that they're still hungry and before anybody says anything none of my children are fat yes i know you've seen my picture i'm fat i freely admit that i'm fat but i used to have a hell of a fat metabolism so i used to eat like crazy and then eventually one day the metabolism stopped so now I'm fat. My children, however, are not. So I really don't understand why we have to go through this whole thing of, well, you know, you should eat less and you should eat more of this. You know what? They're kids. Let them be kids. I'm not saying we can't give them healthy choices and healthy alternatives, but don't strip all of their choices away. But that's the thing, folks. The government doesn't want you making choices. The government doesn't want you making decisions because if they can keep you to the point to where you're not making any decisions on your own but you're defaulting to their best judgment, that is exactly where they want you. And I hate to tell you this, folks, but a lot of us are already there. You don't believe me? Take a look at the 2012 election results. You cannot tell me that that man won an election on his policies. What he won was the you gave me the most free stuff award and now this guy wants to take it back so I'm going to pull the lever for you award. That's what he won. Right then and there at that moment, that's when I knew we were in trouble because we have now created an entitlement mentality and an entitlement society and they're not going to ever give it up. They won't because they can't because now they depend on it. All right, so one last thing to touch on, and then we are going to have to start winding things down for the day. Um, now, this is not the audio I was looking for, but it will dovetail pretty nicely since he's actually said this stuff within a few days of each other. So we're going to play this real quick, um, give you my two cents on that, and then we will finish off uh, basically again going over what he said about gun control or uh, gun manufacturers. Questa nostra casa. Our house is going to ruin, and that harms everyone, especially the poorest. Mine is therefore an appeal for responsibility, based on the task that God has given to man in creation, till and keep the garden in which he was placed. I invite everyone to accept with open hearts this document, which follows the Church's social doctrine. Pope Francis said... All right, so yeah, not going to play any more of that, but, you know, you heard the translation... You know, now all of a sudden we have a pope telling us that we should be more socialist. Uh, we have a pope who earlier today, I believe it was, actually said that people that are uh, gun manufacturers or gun sellers, uh, or I guess his exact words were the folks that sell weaponry, should not consider themselves Christian. Okay, so uh, back to something I said a while ago, and I don't have the scripture in front of me any longer. But there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus actually tells his followers, if you, are, if you have a belt when you travel, take it with you. If you have a purse when you travel, take it with you. If you have a cloak, sell your cloak to get a sword. But the Pope just said that if you're going to manufacture weapons or sell them, you can't be a Christian. Was it different when it was Swords Pope? Is it alright for you to have your armed bodyguards and your whole... Your, I mean, come on. The Vatican is its own separate country. Inside of Italy, it's its own sovereign territory. And they have their own police force. Pretty sure at least a handful of them have guns. The Pope's bodyguards have guns. But we're not supposed to? So, I have a question. If it is, if you cannot be a Christian and manufacture weapons, what are you if you buy them? And since your group, the Vatican, buys a lot of weaponry, what does that make you? I'm going to get hate mail for this one. I'm sorry, in this instance, when it comes to the whole gun control argument, and the fact that people that make and sell guns cannot be Christians, then you, Pope Francis, are a hypocrite. When you tell your bodyguards to get rid of their guns, when you disarm the entire Vatican, 
then you can no longer be a hypocrite. But as long as your money, the Vatican's money, is being spent to arm people, to keep you safe, then you, sir, are a hypocrite. Because if people that can that manufacture guns can't be Christians, if people that sell guns can't be considered Christians, what are people that buy guns? And you, sir, whether you want to admit it or not, have by proxy bought weaponry. So before you start telling us that people that buy guns or sell guns and make guns can't be Christians. I'm going to get hate mail again. Can already feel it coming. I have this little, you know, when I when I get to the point where I know that people are going to not like what I'm about to say, I have these little hairs on the back of my neck that stand up. It's usually a pretty good indicator that I'm about to step in it. But you know me, I don't just walk the line. I take an occasional flying leap right over that line. And I'm going to do that tonight. Because, again, if by extension, people that buy and sell guns can't be Christians, or sell guns and make guns can't be Christians, and obviously, as far as the Pope is concerned, people that buy guns probably can't be Christians either. So, Pope, by your definition, I'm not a Christian. And by your own definition, you're not a Christian. And that is just about going to do it for tonight's show, folks. Now that I know I have pretty much enraged a bunch of people and I have lots of friends that are Catholic that are going to listen to the show and they are going to tear me to shreds because I just said the Pope wasn't a Christian. But I didn't say it. He said it. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. Again, I will be back with you tomorrow. Maybe... All right, there we go. Now it's finally loading. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. I will be back with you tomorrow with Bill Morgan, the founder of uh, the Twitter anti-bullying campaign. He'll be with me live. Uh, Also, don't forget to tune in later for The Right Angle with Bill and Leslie. We're out, folks. You have a good night. Game over, man. It's game over.